Hello everyone, we're here continuing our discussion about how to do your payroll bookkeeping right. This time we're going to take a look at some things that you could potentially do within your payroll system to make the process a little faster, a little more automated. Uh, however, it will depend on the payroll processor that you're using. Today I'm using the example of ADP and they have something that can facilitate this and what we're going to look at is these transactions here as we looked at, at a, in a previous video which i'll link below we were we were doing it a little bit more manually by uh, by creating a journal entry and inputting everything there but now we're going to take the same transactions that we looked at during that video and we're going to apply it in this more automated, a little bit more faster way. Here we have these two transactions coming into our bank feed. So you'll see here this one. It says ADP wage pay for $2,730.72. And this is titled ADP tax. And this is for $871.28. Now, this one here is for the net pay of an employee. However much is going into their bank account that was processed through ADP and it's being remitted to them. This number here, the 871.28, that's actually the payroll taxes being paid. And it's both the employer contribution and as well, whatever was withheld from this employee right here that's being paid this amount, they're also being withheld what taxes they own and ADP is remitting that to the appropriate taxing agencies, whether that's the IRS, in this case, the, uh, the Franchise Tax Board of California or whatever else, whatever else might be. This here is all that tax. All right, now we're gonna come to ADP. And what we're going to do, we're going to go to the general ledger. What that's going to allow us to do is we're going to see this different actually this here is once everything is set up but i'll walk you through what you would need to do first usually we would go to payroll we would go here again general ledger we go to general ledger settings and the first thing that you're going to need to do that's this is already done here but it's quite easy you'll just going to connect to your QuickBooks Online. Might have different integrations as well if you're using a different bookkeeping system. But here in this example, you we just connected the QuickBooks Online. It's just gonna ask you your login and password for it and it'll be able to synchronize your QuickBooks Online account with ADP. Next step is to import the chart of accounts and I believe it usually does that automatically right after connecting QuickBooks and it'll probably prompt you to do that. Now you're gonna go next after that's all done and we already have the mapped chart of accounts for this company but we're gonna go here and review all that. Okay what you're going to see here is you want to make sure that every kind of pay here or every kind of category here that ADP or your payroll processor is presenting to you is going to be linked to a specific account that's already in your chart of accounts. Now, while we're reviewing this, you might not have a similar account to either one of these already within your chart of accounts. And what you need to do is to create 
that account specific specifically for what category is going to be if it's going to be an expense or is it going to be a liability account and of course the bank account you're already going to have here so the first one that asks you is check register account and that's going to be the bank account where you'll have the charges from your payroll processor being made whether that's the wage expense or whether those are the payroll taxes, which bank account are you using to have those expenses? So you're just going to put, this is the only one that's going to ask you for a type of account that will be an asset account, which is, which will be a bank account. Then the, for all the rest of them here, here you see that this one is payroll expenses. So, all of these are going to be expense accounts. And then we come down here to payroll liabilities. And all of these are going to be liability accounts. And therefore, that's why you see these ones are coded as 2000s. And that will usually be what you use for liability accounts. And then for expense accounts, you'll usually use uh, 6,000 uh, start start of the number and for bank accounts or asset accounts they will start with the 1,000 uh, uh, beginning so here we're seeing all these different kinds of accounts from the chart of accounts we're gonna go through just very briefly you want to make sure that you're selecting everything. You cannot leave anything blank. Otherwise, it won't let you uh, continue here or save, save it. And so, you could take a screenshot of this to give you a better idea. It's probably not going to be the same exact as what I have here for you. But it's going to be something very similar. For payroll expenses here, most of them you can see they are classified as wage expense. As we come down here to these particular, uh, these particular selections, these are going to be payroll tax expense as opposed to wage expense, because here we are, we are dealing with kind of expenses that are actually tax it's not necessarily going to be the wage expense it's going to be that tax expense because here you see it's this is social security this is again social security this is medicare federal unemployment act state unemployment these are all payroll taxes as we come to this section here you're going to see that these are payroll liabilities. And we're going to start with federal income tax. I personally have a, a, a specific selection for that, which is federal taxes payable. And we're going, we're going down the list. You can take note of what we're selecting to use here. Social Security, Medicare, and of course, always consult with your personal accountant on these matters you you should always do do so uh, but he, yeah here we we have um, also a very generalized payroll liabilities account because a lot of these things we don't really we don't really have specific accounts for it but we just put it under payroll liabilities state income taxes payable we have here we made us we made a special one just particular for California State Disability Insurance, CASI, payable. And then for a lot of them, as you can see, we just went for this generic one. Now, this one is an important one. Net pay, we are using wages payable. Again, this is not, this is not wage expense as we saw here in this category. Because remember, these are all payroll liabilities. We need to use not wage expense for the net pay. 
we need to use wages payable and notice again the starting code is going to be 2000s because those are how the liability accounts always start we have here social security which is federal taxes payable and so on and so forth federal unemployment tax federal taxes payable state unemployment state unemployment payable okay we went over what you need to input here and after that you can go to settings and you'll see that they give you they give you a lot of granularity they give you a lot of options here what you want to do but if it's simple enough you know you can you can just select companies the summary you know and how would you like to list employee names you can just put this one do not validate if it's simple enough and you don't want to overcomplicate things you want to get into more more granular granularity more details you can do so now here's here's something that how would you like to post your payroll transactions to your accounting software especially when you're getting the hang of it and making sure that you're doing everything right you probably want to select manually because if you select automatically after payroll it'll automatically post any payroll it'll send it automatically to your accounting software and if you if you run late a few of these payrolls to do the bookkeeping you might it might just pile on and you might get confused later on so i suggest that you you put you put manually at, at least at the start when you're getting the hang of it and uh, and you'll see what we mean by that okay after you've done all that what's going to happen is we can go back here to the general ledger again and we're going to go now to the general ledger transactions and what we're going to want to do we're going to see that every time that you run a payroll there will be something like this that's going to show up and it's going to apply to whatever payroll period that you did that you run that you run the payroll for for example here this payroll period is from may 1st to may the 31st and we're going to see the check date here for june 7th and we see that it's it was posted but we actually did some things for the previous video that undid that so we're going to go ahead here and we're going to we're going to select actions here and we're going to select send data to your accounting software so you click on that and it takes a, a few seconds for it to post okay it went through now what we're gonna do we're gonna go to your bookkeeping software here it's quickbooks online and we're going to take a look at what happened when we did that okay we go to new here we can go to journal entry as if we're going to create a new journal entry but we're really not it's just a little trick here that I'm going to show you then you go here to the upper left corner you're gonna click on this button here it's gonna give you different journal entries that were created and you can actually as well click on view more here and it'll give you a lot of the journal entries you know that have been created for for in within your bookkeeping software what we really want to look at are these particular ones
these particular ones that were created for June 7th. So we'll click on this one. And you're going to see a breakdown of what ADP sent to uh, create towards creating these journal entries. That's what when you when you click on send the the payroll, the transactions, this is what's being created by ADP. This is what is being sent to QuickBooks online. And we actually have another journal entry so it's going to be a total of two usually and this here it's going to show the what was credited from the bank account the main bank account where you process your payroll and then it, it you see here because remember this 2730 and 72 cents this here remember was the the uh the pay for the employee it was the pay after any withholdings and we see that it's wages payable yeah and the reason why this wages payable is being created is because we want to be able to balance this checking account transaction with what we're going to have in this journal entry here, the other journal, and oh, apologies, it's this one. This journal entry here, which says that the wage expense is actually $3,333.33. This comes from the payroll report. You can view all that because the actual pay for this employee was this amount, and there were payroll payroll retent or withholdings from this amount which is part of this right here you can check out all of that in the other video which i will link a description below if you want to take a look at the actual payroll uh, reports and you're going to see how it all breaks down. However, this video is only going to be, it's only going to show you how to do this more automated method. And we're not going to go into all the details and the breakdown of that. I actually did also a blog post where we go in minute detail about all this. And you can check out in the description below about that blog post where we go step by step and explain what everything, all the breakdown is. Okay. Now what you're going to do, we already know that we have these two journal entries here, but we need to do something with them. We can just leave them as they are. We're going to actually go back here to these transactions and we're going to see that this one, 2730 and 72 cents, there you're going to see this green thing that says one match found. We're going to click on it and it's already going to be selected for the matching and it says journal entry payroll for June 7th. Okay. Yeah. It seems about right. The date of it, just one day difference should be it. And what we're going to do, we're going to just match it right there. Now here for this transaction, we don't need this. We're actually going to select split right here. Because remember, the journal entry that was created, okay, let's actually pull it up real quick. This journal entry that was created, it's having a lot of different payable accounts. For example, here, California State Disability Insurance for $30. Federal taxes payable for this amount here. All these amounts 
are liability accounts that actually need to need you need to make sure that you're not keeping them on your books as liabilities because ADP actually remit remits the payroll taxes automatically to the taxing authorities, the taxing agencies. So we don't want these transactions laying around in the books. We want to lower them. And that's actually what you're viewing here, this $871.28 transaction is actually, if you add these all up, all the payroll liabilities, they're gonna come up to eight, that 800 and change amount, okay? So we're just gonna come to this journal entry and say, okay, CASD payable was for $30, we're going to go cast the locate that account. We're going to go $30. All right. Next one. Federal taxes payable. That's for $755.17. We have payroll. Oh, sorry. That one's not a liability. State income taxes payable for We have state unemployment payable for $11.67. Oh, did we do something wrong here? Um, 74.4. Oh. No, we did that right. 755.17. Oh, yeah. We missed two cents there. And at the end of that, you're going to end up with a difference of zero. That's the check that you should be mindful of to see if it actually went down to zero. We're going to go apply and accept. Great. Now for this wages payable here, remember, we already lowered that, the wages payable, through the bank transaction that we matched with the, with this journal entry that's how this one went to zero now if we want to check if we did everything right what we could do is go here to reports go to balance sheet then we can select for the ending date the day of the payroll check. And now we're gonna go down the balance sheet over to other current liabilities where a lot of, or, or most of the payable accounts or the liability accounts that we were using should be. And we're gonna see that they're all gonna be zero here. They're all zeroed out, including wages payable, including everything else. And that's it. That's how you check that it actually was done correctly. Now, every check that comes in, you're going to do the same process. You're going back, sending the general ledger uh, trans or post. You're going to send it to the QuickBooks Online and then you're going to work with the journal entries and make sure that the banking transactions are handled appropriately. That's it for this one. Make sure to check out the blog post. I'm going to get, put the link in the description below that goes step by step. And it's going to link to the other blog post where we did another method, which is a little bit more manual. But it's essentially the same thing without using the automated uh, ADP or whatever payroll processor that you're using, uh, which is going to 
generally save you a little bit of time in doing this. Okay, that was it for this one. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one.